In this video, we'll go over what a mechanical drawing should entail, our seven steps for preparing a drawing, and finally, how to correctly add critical dimensions, hole callouts, threads, and specifying tolerances on a technical drawing. You can download a high resolution version and CAD of the technical drawing we are using as an example in this video. Find the links in the description below. Let's start with what a mechanical drawing should look like. A technical drawing typically consists of the following components. A title block, an isometric pictorial view, the main orthographic views of the part, section views or detail views, and notes to the manufacturer. Let's discuss each of these in more detail. First, the title block. It's essential for the information in the title block to communicate the part's primary function. It therefore contains basic information, such as the part name, the material, the finishing, and color requirements, the designer's name, and the company. It also contains technical information, including the scale of the blueprint and the standards used for dimensioning and tolerancing. Another element that's usually present in or near the title block is the angle projection. The angle projection determines the way the views are arranged in the drawing. Typically, the drawings that use ASME standards, US and Australia, use third angle projection, and ISO DIN standards, Europe, use first angle projection. Second, the pictorial isometric view. We advise that you add at least one 3D pictorial view of the part to your technical drawing. As you can see, it's a lot easier to understand what the part should look like. Third, the main orthographic views. Most information about the geometry of your part is conveyed in the main orthographic views. The orthographic views are two-dimensional depictions of the three-dimensional part, representing the exact shape of the part as seen from an outer side of a bounding box, one side at a time. But of course, the edges of the part are drawn the way to allow for the clearer communication of dimensions and features. For most parts, two or three orthographic views are enough to accurately describe the whole geometry. Fourth, section views. Section views are used to show the internal details of a part. The cutting line in the main orthographic view shows where the part is cross-sectioned and the cross-hatch pattern. The section view indicates regions where raw material has been removed. It's good to mention that technical drawings can have multiple section views with two letters linking each cutting line with each section view. For example, AA and B. The arrows of the cutting line indicate the direction. The part can be sanctioned along its whole width, along half its width or at an angle. Fifth, the detail views. Detail views are used to highlight complex or difficult to dimension areas of a part as seen on the main orthographic view. They are typically circular in shape and are noted with a single letter that links the detail view with the main drawing. For example, A, B, and so on. Detail views can be placed anywhere on the drawing. Finally, notes. Notes to the manufacturer include additional information that was not included in the mechanical drawing itself. These crucial bits of information can, for example, include instructions to deburr all sharp edges and specific overall surface finishing requirements. But you could also use it to reference another CAD file or another component with which the part in the drawing interacts. Notes to the manufacturer often use symbols instead of text. For example, surface roughness is commonly annotated with a symbol. Now, let's have a look at how to prepare the best technical drawings. There are seven steps we recommend. The first step, define the most important views and place the relevant orthographic in the center of the drawing, leaving enough space between them to add dimensions. Step two, if your part has internal features or complex and difficult to dimension areas, consider adding section views or detail views. Step three, add construction lines to all views. Construction lines include center lines, center marks, and center mark patterns. Step four, add dimensions to your CNC drawing, starting with the most important dimensions first. Step five, specify the location, size, and length of all threads. Step six, add tolerances to features that need higher accuracy than the standard tolerance. We follow ISO 2768, medium or fine for metals and medium for plastics. Step seven, fill in the title block and make sure that all relevant information and requirements that exceed the standard practices are mentioned in the additional notes. Now we can dive deeper into the specifics of adding dimensions, tolerances, and annotations in your technical drawing. When including both a 3D CAD file and a technical drawing in your order, the manufacturer will primarily check the dimensions of the technical drawing. Therefore, we recommend that you dimension all important features on your drawings thoroughly. Let's go over some tips to help you dimension. First, start by placing the overall dimensions of the part. Second, add the dimensions that are most critical for functional purposes. For example, 
The distance between the two holes in the example drawing is vital. Third, add dimensions to other features. A good practice is to place all dimensions starting from the same baseline, as shown in the example. Fourth, the dimensions should be placed on the view that describes the feature most clearly. For example, the dimensions of the threaded holes are not included in this view, as they are more clearly described in the detail view. Fifth, for repeated features, add dimensions to only one of them, indicating the total number of times the feature is repeated on the current view. In the example, two identical holes with a counter bore are specified using a 2x in the callout. How do you add hole callouts to a technical drawing? Holes are common features in CNC machine parts. They are usually machined with a drill, so they have standardized dimensions. They often also include secondary features, such as counter bores and countersinks. Adding a callout instead of dimensioning each individual feature is recommended. In this example, the callout defines two identical through holes with a counter bore. The depth symbol can be used instead of adding an additional dimension to the drawing. If your parts contain threads, then you must clearly identify and define them on the technical drawing. Threads should be defined by indicating a standard thread size, for example, M4 by 0.7, instead of a diameter dimension. We recommend providing detailed thread callouts as they add clarity to the drawing and allow the specification of pilot holes and threads with different lengths. How do you specify tolerances in a technical drawing? Tolerances define a range of acceptable values for a certain dimension of a part. Tolerances tell a story about the function of the part and are especially important for features that interact with other components. They come in many different formats and can be applied to any dimension to a CNC drawing, both linear and angular. Bilateral tolerances, the simplest tolerance, are symmetrical around the base dimension, for example, plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. There are also unilateral tolerances and engineering fit tolerances, which are defined in the technical table, for example, 6H. A flatness tolerance was defined in the example. A more advanced way to define a tolerance is GD and T, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. The geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GD and T, system is more difficult to apply than standard dimensioning and tolerancing, but is considered superior as GD and T communicates engineering intent more clearly. With GD and T, you can define looser tolerances and still fulfill the main design requirements while improving quality and reducing the cost. In the example, true position was used to define the tolerance of this pattern of holes. Other common geometric tolerances include flatness and concentricity. Here is an example of how to apply the GD and T system to a part design. This callout defines eight holes with a nominal diameter of 10 millimeters and a tolerance of plus or minus 0.1 millimeter to their diameter. This means that no matter where you measure the diameter, the result of the measurement must be between 9.9 and 10.1 millimeters. The true position tolerance defines the location of the center of the hole with respect to the three main baseline edges datum of the part. This means that the center axis of the hole must always be within an ideal cylinder that has a center at the location defined by the theoretically exact dimensions in the drawing and a diameter equal to 0.1 millimeter. This practically means that the center of the hole will not drift away from its design location guaranteeing that the part can fit the rest of the assembly. We recommend adding G, D, and T information to your parts for critical assemblies and at later stages of the design process, for example, during full-scale production. These both have higher metrology requirements, which increase the cost of a one-off prototype. With that, we have come to the end of this video.